How's it going everyone? I'm Contemption and today we're going to talk about Joan of Arc and how I use her in open field. She is a fantastic commander, but there are some positive and negatives to her that you need to know about where to use her, when to use her, and why you use her. So let's get through the intro, if I click the right button, and here we go. Okay, so Joan of Arc is fantastic. I still use her on my main account in Sunset Canyon, Lost Canyon, and I could definitely use her in open field. I do use Mulan right now, and I will especially use Mulan as soon as she is expertise. But right now she's 5535, and I found that works really good with Constantine. Constantine is my sixth march, so I don't even use him for um, Arc of Osiris. I typically just leave him at home. But during Season of Conquest KVK, I get the extra crystal tech and I'm able to use him as my 6th march. Joan is fantastic. However, I found that on my free-to-play account in 2563, which I have lots of videos about, I didn't use her at all. I have her expertise. I don't have her at level 60 because I never use her as a primary. I do not suggest using her as a primary. But I didn't use her at all. And we'll go over why I didn't use her. But first off, let's take a look at her civilization. Because that is hands down the best part of Joan and France and the special unit. Everything about France is fantastic. If you started with France as your starting civilization, not bad at all. I suggest China instead. And I've mentioned that in the previous videos. Just because of Sun Tzu and how strong he is. How great he is in open field fighting. How good he is in early, uh, in early Rise of Kingdoms just for farming barbarians. With his AoE instantly right out of the gate, he's a fantastic commander. But France is what I use on all of my accounts, especially because I love field fighting and that's where I excel. This is by far the best civilization. So especially if you're running infantry. If you're not an infantry commander, um, then maybe this isn't the best one for you. However, I do know people who run cavalry, infantry, and some archers who run France just because of the hospital speed. So the hospital healing speed of 20% saves you so many speed ups when you start talking about how the special unit is and how the T5 troops take so many speed ups to heal. Once you have a full hospital on T5, you'll totally understand. It also increases health by 3% to all troops. So it doesn't matter whether you're running cavalry, infantry, or archers, you're getting that 3% buff. The wood gathering speed, you know, it is what it is. If you're an archer player, then it's probably fine but for everybody else it really doesn't matter for wood everybody has way too much wood to begin with uh, but the infantry special unit i can't show you from there so i'm gonna have to go in here you can tell from this page right here that my elite throwing axeman which is france and i know it's a little confusing to look at like this has 227 health which is very high for t5 i don't get any other buffs from defense or attack it all goes into health so france has the most amount of health based stats for infantry which is what you're trying to gain is health for less severely wounded and that's where her hospital healing speed also comes into effect it's a fantastic civilization okay Joan of Arc and her skills why I didn't get her to level 60 on my free to play account is because she's a secondary you can put her behind so many different commanders but you want to hide her so typically you'll want to see her behind Charles Martel or Richard Yes, they don't have rage engines. They're not going to be casting as often as you'd like, but they hide her. So she's going to be out in the field doing her primary expertise boosted skill of four seconds. So for four seconds in a large circular area, you and f it, it counts for five in total. So it's most likely going to be, you know, your troops and four other marches out in the field. Or it could be all five of your marches if you're the only one within that circular effect. But it gains 30% increased health for infantry, 30% increased defense for cavalry, and 30% increased attack for archers. Plus, you get 50 additional rage per second. That's where it's so strong because you're not, no matter who it hits, it's not going to be putting their rage past the cap. So it's working for every march that it hits. And it's for four seconds. So it's Honestly, it's fantastic. It is such a good skill. I wish I had a place for her 
Or I wish she was a little bit... I don't know where she could be stronger because she is so strong. But Mulan just kind of, once she's expertise, has a little bit more on her because she's doing health, defense, and attack to all the marches. Not just, you know, 30% health to infantry, 30% defense to cavalry, and 30% increased attack to archers. So Mulan eventually becomes better, especially now that she has the relic as well. But Joan of Arc is still fantastic. She is a gathering commander, and I'll show you the talent trees for that. That is where I use her 99% of the time. It's really only during war that I might put her out there or in Sunset and Lost Canyon. The healing is not that great. Normal troop attacks, uh, sorry, the normal attacks of troops led by this commander have a 10% chance to heal a portion of slightly un wounded units. Healing factor 450. This effect can trigger once every five seconds, and that's it. 10% chance once every five seconds. It doesn't accumulate to a lot. It does help, but it's not going to show anything significant in your reports. This is nice though. Increased normal attack damage of troops led by this commander by 25%. And as I said, her expertise goes into her primary skill. Before the expertise, it's only two seconds and you're getting 40 rage instead of 50. So I highly suggest if you're going to use Joan as a secondary, she's got to be expertised. Now, you can use her behind other commanders. I don't know though, you really want to hide her. Like uh, early, early game before a lot of, uh, before equipment was around, before these talent trees were even around. CPO and Joan of Arc was a very strong combo. They did very well in open field. And now you don't really see CPO very often in open field unless it's very early kingdom. But in KVK season one, you're not going to see CPO very often. So. I would stick to just putting her behind Charles Martel and Richard for now. I wouldn't branch off until Season of Conquest when you get Constantine. Or I guess that's KVK Season 2 or 3 where you get Constantine. I don't think he's a... Yeah, just Season 2. Sorry. I thought he was a Season of Conquest commander, but he's not. So you'll get him before then. So definitely you can get Constantine at 5511. Level 60 with some decent gear. A good talent tree. I like this one. Uh, some people might say, well, why do you have five in Cage of Thorns? I had a video about this, and I'll show you on Joan of Arc, because she has the same talent tree. It's actually an area of effect skill, the same size as her primary, and it hits five targets. It's very strong. But Constantine's definitely where you want to put Joan later on, once you get Constantine at 5511. I think he's a great commander. I still use him. I would still work him today if I had the, the sculptures and I was reworking a, a commander or a... a an account I would still use Constantine and as soon as I get him on my account 2396 I will 100% be getting him up to 5511 absolutely so talents this is what Joan will always have I will not use Joan as a primary I'll show you the talent tree you can use there's two of them that I think are decent if you're going to put her as a primary again in very early Rise of Kingdoms as a new player you can get away with using her as a primary. People aren't going to know that she's much of a target. But if you have her expertise and you started with France, then, you know, it's not terrible. But obviously, this is a pretty standard gathering. You get it at level 40. Obviously, you're going to the very end. You're grabbing the increased siege march speed. And then you just kind of grab whatever. I think I just went for most of the march speed in here. I might have missed a little bit. So I should change this. But I'm not, it's not worth the reset. I only have three to begin with, so I wouldn't use that. Um, so the three tree or two other trees you can use if you are using her for field fighting. And again, I don't suggest it. You can run this, which is good. You get more troops. You get more, you know, what is this? Armies led by this commander. Containing three because you want to use her with mixed troops. Uh, all damage taken is reduced by 4%. So you can send out, you know, 90% infantry, 5% archers, 5% cavalry. And then you'll be able to get some of these extra skills here or talents here you can go to armored teeth and that's where this talent tree comes into effect this is more for mixed troops and it does pretty well as well but it only has one at cage of thorns which isn't terrible but again based on the testing i did five out of five on cage of thorns if you're already there it's very strong and it's definitely worth it but there you go now <laughs> equipment for joan as you can see i don't even have equipment on joan if I went to somebody like my Sion Diak, obviously I've got pretty decent gathering equipment. I could probably actually refine this. Eh, it's not worth it with just one. But I, I don't know. If you're going to be using her 
for field fighting. Then get her some infantry gear. You know, the shield is good. You're going to want to put health on there, but you could also do other gear if you're using mixed troops and you don't want to do 90% infantry and then 5% archers and 5% cav. You could do like, you know, 30, 30, 40, and you can start grabbing gear like this. Staff of the Lost is really good for mixed troops. I, I've just, I've never run a mixed troop kind of field fighting march with any success. Early game, I did it. I don't know, what would you use for this? I don't know, maybe Helm of the Phoenix because it's cheap to forge and it's giving you stats on archers and infantry, but you're really not getting anything with all three. You'll have to play around with it, to be honest. I don't have much advice for using her as a primary commander. I don't think it's worth it. I think you just want to hide her behind somebody else. And like I said, on my free-to-play account in 2563, even though I have her expertise, I haven't been able to use her, nor would I, just because I don't have enough troops for more than one march. And I'd rather use Bjorn and Sunsuit to do awesome damage, instant proc damage, and really cast those skills quickly. But there you go, guys. That's Joan of Arc. I think she's a great commander. I still use her to this day. Like I said, in Sunset Canyon, Lost Canyon. I'll probably switch that with Mulan soon. But again, I'm an older player who has used a lot of gold keys. So Mulan will be finished soon. But uh, there you go, guys. I think she's a great commander. Her civilization is by far the best. I hope you got something out of this video. Um, if you disagree or you have comments you want to leave below, please do. I appreciate all the comments. I read them all. I usually like, heart, and respond to them. So thank you very much for all the comments, guys. Until next time, have a good one. Later.